so I'm a system guy. Classes are cool and all, but I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit disappointed when the note showcase got delayed until next month. But with that being said, Intrepid did an excellent job showing us the new Cleric update this month and showing the progression it has made since we last saw it in the November stream and keeping the style similar to the Mage archetype preview we got a few months ago. And doing all this along with taking us through a small story arc in the game. While the story arc wasn't as world changing as the Carvin showcase we got back at the beginning of the year, it still had some impact on the world. But a few things to get off right from the beginning. While this showcase shows us roughly 18 cleric abilities, some familiar to us from the November showcase, and a lot of new, this doesn't necessarily represent the cleric you will be playing come Alpha 2 or even launch. You more than likely won't be having every single one of these abilities as a level 15 cleric. As Steven stated throughout certain milestones in leveling, you will unlock skill points. This won't be every level up type of deal, but milestones within each level, such as filling up one fourth of your bar and then one half of your bar and so on and so forth, may grant you points. You can then take these skills and spec them into which abilities you want for your class. While the majority we saw in the stream was mostly defensive abilities of various heals, there will be offensive ones along with some multi-use abilities as well that do heals to friendlies and damage to enemies. And you'll really want to choose your spec depending on what you are doing. Intrepid doesn't want certain classes to be lagging behind when it comes to leveling because they are full of defensive only abilities such as a tank or healer. So Intrepid is looking for a balance so you may have a completely different more offensive focus spec for leveling or solo play and then swap more into a direct heal type ability when grouping up with players. You may also notice that there are still a bunch of graphical issues going on with the environment. While Corey Rice, one of the devs working for Intrepid, was in my friend Rive's chat during the stream while he was on his lunch break and stated that Intrepid has been wrestling with Unreal Engine 5.1 graphical issues. Lots of bugs were introduced with that engine version that are fixed by Epic in 5.2. So once Intrepid passes that milestone and gets that big 5.2 upgrade, the world should be looking a lot better. The next thing, if you have feedback on the cleric, make sure you head over to the forums to give it so Intrepid can actually hear what you want to say. They are listening, they are jumping into comments on Discord, YouTube videos, content creator stuff, Twitter, jumping into random live streams, but especially the forums. They compile the majority of their information from the forums, so make sure you give your feedback over there. And lastly, with the visual effects, they are insanely bright at times, and with multiple clerics on the screen, you can expect to have a flashbane effect and temporarily be blinded. But with that being said, all spell effects in Ashes of Creation will be scalable in graphic settings come launch. So the players who like them this bright will be able to have them that way, and if they're too bright for you, you should be able to scale them back. While we don't know how far this scale will go, I imagine they will be able to be toned down quite a bit. Diving into the actual showcase, we see Steven and Gain heading into the Highwayman Hills, an area located within the Riverlands near the Tower of Carfin, as you can see looming in the back background, and this is a dangerous, rocky, more mountain-like region once occupied by bandits. But due to a story arc being triggered, it is now filled up with Minotaur who have claimed the area. Steven and company have teamed up with an NPC bandit by the name of Split to push the Minotaur out of the region by summoning undead with a signal flare, which seems like a pretty strange way to handle it, pushing out one enemy to make room for more, but you know, I need to see the in-depth lore to really understand what's going on here. For the cleric, overall, it's a healer. It has some pretty unique abilities leads to ashes such as a dash slash melee heal combo and then it has a lot you are similar with as a healer such as your standard quick cast heal your instant cast and your bubbles although the bubble does have a unique twist on it we'll get into in a minute going through the abilities in order of the action bar at number one we have mend which instantly launches a healing projectile towards the target ally each charge of this ability that is consumed after the first has no mana cost and restores an increasing amount of mana to the caster based on the number of missing charges consecutive uses of this ability will gain bonus healing as well. Second, there is Deliverance, a held ability that charges up healing energy that heals a target ally upon release. The longer it is charged, the more percent of healing is done on the target. Third, Soothing Glow, apply a heal over time effect to target ally. Reapplying this effect extends its duration on the target by its base duration value. Number four, Flash Cure, instantly heals target ally. This may be used during other ability activation, so basically it's off the global cooldown, so to speak, although they 
stated that there is no global cooldown in effect right now, but you could combo this with other heals to make double the effect. 5. Resplendent Beam A held ability that fires a healing energy towards target ally. Charging the spell allows the beam to bounce up to 5 additional friendly targets closest to the original. The amount of healing is reduced for each subsequent target. 6. On the action bar is Bless Weapon, which generates mana per hit on weapon combos when cast. This will be a great support ability, having the healer perhaps help out more than just health regen when it comes to other party members. V on the action bar, which is what Steven has hotkeyed after the 6 key, is Smite. Smite your target, dealing instant damage and applying a stack of burning to target enemy. This has no cast time and deals increased damage if activated within melee range of the target. This attack always critically hits on target under the effect of Condemned, which is the next ability placed at F on the action bar. Condemned stuns target enemies for 3 seconds. R on the action bar is Divine Infusion, which consumes divine power to instantly complete the remaining cast time of any healing spell currently being cast. The amount of divine power consumed is proportional to the amount of cast time remaining upon activation. This ability though plays a bit different because it does not consume mana. It uses divine power, which is the yellow resource you can see up here on the action bar. The more you heal as a cleric, the more you generate of divine power. Throughout the current abilities we have seen, this is the only one that actually utilizes this resource. So I imagine we'll see more of this in the future that can probably also be specced into. Or perhaps even have abilities upgraded to use this instead of mana. Last on the main action bar is T, which is Wings of Salvation. Sprout Phoenix-like wings and leap to target ally, then grant a small amount of temporary health to that target on arrival. On the secondary action bar, we're starting with Shift 1. Judgment. Cast a heal on target ally for a large amount of health. If this cast is on an enemy, it instead deals radiant damage to the target and applies two stacks of burning. Shift 2 is Communal Restoration, which in my opinion should be renamed to Blinding Light. This ability restores health to ally party members within range instantly, plus additional healing over time. Allies under the heal over time effect also receive a 10% maximum health for its duration. Shift 3 is Consecrating Wave. This sends forth a cone of radiant that deals radiant damage to all enemies while healing 10 of the nearest allies. So basically a big AoE that does everything. So if your melee DPS and tank are struggling, you can run right up to the group and drop that and move back. Shift 4 is Divine Flare, which has you place a targeted area heal on the ground that heals all targets within after several seconds. The total healing done is split between all the targets within this area. Shift 5 is Barrier, your typical bubble but with a twist. This barrier has you sacrifice 25% of your own maximum health to place a shield on target ally for 10 seconds. Shift 6 is a mana potion, you all know what that does, it's an item that regens mana. Shift V, Chains of Restraint, call forth spectral chains in the area that that stagger enemies within or stagger enemies that already have a staggered effect on them, then it leaves behind an area that deals radiant damage over each second for 8 seconds. Shift F, which is Defying Light, heals target ally for 50% of their maximum health over 10 seconds. If that target would receive fatal damage while under this effect, this effect is consumed and prevents the target's death, healing them for 25% of their maximum health issued. This ability could be a bit overpowered in certain situations, especially PvP ones, but I can see it being a good good group save if the tank is about to die and you don't have enough mana to really get them there. I imagine this one after testing will probably be one that has quite a significant cooldown because of the power of the ability. Then you have Shift R which is a health potion again, an item in your inventory that regains health. And finally Shift T, Healing Touch, which heals a target ally in melee range for a large amount of health. This one could be combined with Wings of Salvation to pull yourself towards that target and then cast Healing Touch right after that to really give a bit of a combo heal in a tight situation. Overall, the Cleric shows massive improvements since its November stream, visually and mechanically. While there are still things that need to be tweaked, such as mana usage, I really enjoy how Intrepid is trying to get the Cleric moving around on the battlefield a bit more and make their position matter with melee range and long range heals. This is something that could really help keep healers engaged with the raid they're in so you aren't just standing in the same spot and moving out of the way for boss mechanics. Now as a healer you're going to be jumping around the boss mechanics and repositioning yourself to get within melee range at times or backing off to be in caster range depending on the situation and this is something that I think a lot of MMOs just tend to forget and healers really just tend to stand there and cast heals and move around for boss mechanics. So it's great to see. Now I just need to see Intrepid give us the same love to the fighter, ranger, and tank down the road. If you made it this far into the video, well be sure to click that subscribe 
subscribe button and hit that thumbs up to help the channel out. Otherwise, be sure to comment down below your thoughts on the cleric and make sure you head over to the forums to give your feedback. If you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. Otherwise, be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come.